And then Moose's former teammate Troy Aikman tells us how the Bears will try and protect Jay Cutler today. Try, we emphasize. Hey, Donovan McNabb is back in his hometown of Chicago as well. We'll have all the latest as the Redskins battle the Bears as we continue after this. morning in Chicago has turned into a glorious afternoon and we welcome you to Soldier Field where the Washington Redskins come to town to take on the Chicago Bears and I get everybody alongside Troy Aikman and Pam Oliver I'm Tom Brennan and welcome to the NFL on Fox the Bears are four and two they sit atop the NFC North and after being here the last couple of days I'm not sure you'd ever know that to be the case. No, and I think a big reason for that has been the inconsistencies on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, they've been pretty good, but you know, he came into the season with Mike Martz as the offensive coordinator, and things looked pretty good there to start the year, but over the last couple of weeks, it has not been very good. They're trying to find their identity. There have been a lot of mistakes. I do think they'll come out today and run the ball more, something that everybody wants to do, but they've got to have success when they do it, because we all know if they don't, then Mike Martz will start <laughs> leaning on heavily on the pass. For the Redskins under first year head coach Mike Shanahan a win today matches their win total all of last year so while it may not always be pretty things are at least heading in a better direction. Yeah you look at them you say wow how have they won the three games that they've won and because defensively they're last in the NFL offensively they've been very average but what they do well is they don't beat themselves offensively they don't turn the ball over and then on defense even though they give up a lot of yards they're outstanding at creating takeaways. That's a formula that's worked for them through the first six weeks. They're hoping it'll work for him again today. Today, a homecoming for Donovan McNabb. He grew up in Chicago, went to Mount Carmel High School, was a football star, basketball star, ran track, played on a state football championship team. For more on Donovan, here's Pam Oliver. Well, Tom, McNabb is also 4-1 and one whenever he comes home to play, so this is really kind of old hat for him. He's very careful to manage his time and energy, likes to limit the number of people he sees so as to avoid distractions. Now, as for this game, he says we need a breakout game. We have got to set ourselves up nicely heading into our bye week a couple of weeks from now. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you very much. McNabb and the Redskins against Cutler and the Bears, and we're back after this from the Verizon NFL Mobile Update. Sell out crowd a beautiful day here in Chicago and Troy Aikman our starting points we begin with the Bears protect 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 been a real problem through the first six games Tom and four different offensive line lineups for the Bears and Jay Cutler has certainly taken his share of hits here in the early going and then for for Washington I think defensively the key for them is going to be to stop the Chicago Bears run and a lot of people out there saying well the Bears don't even call the run but I think that Mike March today is going to come out early in this ball game trying to establish the running game a little like he did two weeks ago against Carolina and if they're unable to have success then as we all know Mike March will start throwing the football and then they become one one dimensional again at Carolina game they ran for two hundred and eighteen yards the most in a game in twenty years by the Bears. They run it seven times in the first quarter last week against Seattle. They run it five times the rest of the game. Well and I think it's important when you've got an offensive coordinator who likes to throw the ball that you have to have success then running the ball early it becomes very difficult to continue to call pass plays or excuse me running plays when you're not having success against Carolina they had success early he stuck with it last week against Seattle they did not he got away from it pretty quickly Chicago won the toss deferred and we'll get the football in the second half so we'll get a look right from the get go at Donovan McNabb and the Washington offense not only a homecoming for McNabb but also for Mike Shanahan he went to East Layden High School out in Franklin Park went on to play quarterback at Eastern Illinois he's in his first season as head coach of the Redskins and with a win today he would pass Bill Cowher for 16th most regular season wins by an NFL head coach. The wind is normally very much a factor in the Windy City but not much so today 
And having said that, the blow, the ball is blown off the tee. We well, couldn't ask for a more beautiful day. Close to 70 degrees. The final week of October. Bobby Gold spins it away. And Brandon Banks from the eight yard line. Lost his footing and lost the ball. The Redskins have recovered. They see Banks go down to the ground, and it looked to me like he had possession of the ball, Tom, at the time that he made contact with the ground. So a good call there by the officiating crew. So now McNabb. He's hit on 58% of his passes, has thrown five touchdowns and five interceptions. He ranks third in the NFC in passing yards. And he'll throw it on first down. And that's Anthony Armstrong down the middle of the field. He's out to the 43 yard line. Nice job coming out play action Anthony Armstrong he's got such great speed that he's able to threaten down the field and that's what creates the separation for him and a good pocket in the middle. A good way to start if you're a quarterback you like coming out and getting a high percentage completion right off the bat and that's what the Redskins were able to do on that first play of the game. False start number 75 offense five yard penalty still first down. Walt Anderson, our referee today. Ryan Terrain coming off a 100 yard rushing game against Indianapolis last week. Armstrong has replaced Joey Galloway starting his third straight game. And up front, another challenge for Trent Williams, a rookie, going toe to toe with Julius Peppers. And that's Terrain, who's up to midfield on his first carry of the afternoon. Chicago defensively ranks eighth overall in the NFL. Peppers in his first year has a couple of sacks had an interception against his old team Carolina Lance Briggs missed last week with an ankle injury he's back in there today and in the secondary Tim Jennings starts for a four straight time there without Zachary Bowman who got hurt last week. Maybe a yard pickup for terrain it'll bring up third down and short for the Washington Redskins on their opening possession of the game. And you talk about this Bears defense and coming off a, a really disappointing game last week against Seattle and, and Julius Peppers was a non factor in that ball game. He just seemed very disinterested in the game itself. In fact that seemed to be shared by the other 10 guys on defense because it was a dispirited effort and they're going to play a lot better in this game. Short job. Incomplete Santana Moss looking for a flag against Jennings and he didn't get it. Well you look at these two offenses coming into the game Washington near the bottom converting on third down and the Chicago Bears last in the league these punters better warm up that leg or better have before they got here to the stadium because they're probably going to be punting the ball a lot. And two of the most dangerous punt return men in all the NFL. Devin Hester number one they're not even going to give him a chance to return. It. It's into the end zone and Chicago will get it at the 20 first possession for Cutler and the Bears when we return. Bears get the football for the first time today. Jay Cutler. Has hit on 60% of his passes this year. Six touchdowns and has really cut down on the interceptions. He led the league in that category a season ago. Ball start, number 70, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Troy, you brought it up earlier. This offensive line for the Bears. They've had two players start at left tackle, two at left guard. Two at right guard and three at right tackle. Well, and then you open the game up with a penalty like that. My guess is they're going to stay with the play that was initially called 
but it gets you out of wanting to do the things that you maybe wanted to do at the start of this game when you started off with a penalty. Matt Forte dropped to the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at Chicago offensively. Forte leads him in rushing and in receptions. Johnny Knox coming off a big game last week against Seattle. Over 120 receiving yards, and we talked about all the issues up front. Olin Krutz, the only player to start every game at the same position. Well, it's an offensive line today that is the same group that played last week, and they believe that overall this is the group that they're going to be dependent on. Devin Hester out across the 20. Time for a game break. Let's check in back in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. If you had the Falcons for the first Sunday touchdown, you win. Brian Fennerin with a three-yard reception from Matt Ryan in Atlanta on the opening possession leads the Bengals 7-0 at the Georgia Dome. Tom, Troy, and Pam. All right, Kurt, good start from Matt Ryan. I know you like Matt Ryan. I do. I sure do. And I expected him to come into this year to be in his third season and having a great year. And well, he's done that. He's off to a good start this year. The Bears have really struggled on third down. And those struggles continue. With Jay Cutler at quarterback, the Bears on third down are now 0 for their last 23. The last time they converted a third down with Cutler in a game was back on September the 27th against Green Bay. That's not very good. Right? <laughs> no, not very you good. know, and Jay Cutler there had good protection. He had good protection. He had an open receiver. Really no excuse for not completing that pass. Talked about Hester, Brandon Max making a name for himself already returning punts for the Redskins. And a nice return here. Redskins will get it at midfield to start their second drive of the afternoon. No score, minutes into the game at Soldier Field in Chicago. And the Redskins start from midfield on this second possession of the game. Go back and take a look at that third down play and you're going to see the Bears are going to block with seven men so they're only sending three guys out in the route so protection is good you got Earl Bennett there in the middle and it's just a miscommunication between he and Jay Cutler and I know Mike Martz has been under the gun all week about not protecting Jay Cutler and the number of hits not running the ball well that time he calls for protection they shore things up and then they just don't execute the pass. McNabb. Right on the money and Armstrong dropped it. Wow. Well Anthony Armstrong took an inside release and I think Charles Tillman once he went inside just thought he was going to stay on maybe a square in and didn't anticipate that Armstrong would work back out towards the sideline but a perfectly thrown ball by Donovan McNabb. You just don't get that many opportunities and you can't afford to miss when they come up. Third and ten. Another drop ball, this time by Cooley. Now the Bears force another three and out. They came into this game leading the NFL in forcing three and outs, but not because of anything they did. Just two drop passes there, one by Armstrong and then the sure-handed Chris Cooley. And you know, Julius Peppers, we talked about it. I would expect him to have a have an impactful game today. You know, these two tackles for the Washington Redskins struggled last week. And, as we know, Pepper's certainly capable of taking over a ball game. Punted out of bounds. And we'll see where they spot it. Close to the 30 yard line. A Cooley and the Redskins frustrated early after a couple of drops. Coming into the game, the Redskins had the fewest number of drop passes by their receivers among all teams in the NFL. But two big drops on that last series by Armstrong and Cooley. And after a 20-yard punt, Forte on first down. 
Still on his feet and picks up maybe a yard. Redskins defensively. Kamoyatu in the middle. They've gone to the 3 4. Arakpo has already picked up five sacks. Rocky McIntosh back after missing last week with a concussion. And keep an eye on number 30, LaRon Landry. What a year he's having. It's Jay Cutler over the top of your screen and taking the direct snap. Is Devin Hester, and that did not fool the Washington defense. No, you take a look at this right now, and Mike Marks, I mean, he's looking at that play sheet just not knowing what he should call. And, you know, fans want to see him call more runs, but as we've seen again here today, there's been three runs called and virtually no yardage to speak of. And when you're constantly faced with second and ten, third and ten, when you've called running plays, it's hard to keep calling running plays, especially when you're Mike Marks and you have such strong confidence in your ability to put your quarterback in a position to make plays down the field. But the issues up front have been a real concern, both passing and running. Dead last in third down conversions. And that number's on the way down. As Cutler is sacked again. That is 28 sacks allowed by the Bears most in the league. You can see the push right here. Albert Hainsworth, he's just going to go right through the left side and pushes him right back. Chris Williams right back into Jay Cutler. And Rackpo coming off the edge and you know the edge pressure you can handle but when you got Albert Hainsworth driving a man right in your lap you got no chance. Hainsworth back for the first time in three weeks after the sad news of losing his half brother in a motorcycle accident. And the Redskins again will get great field position. Still no score in Chicago. Well, the Bears searching for answers. Struggling again on offense. Again surrendering a sack. The both teams slow to get it started on offense. Terrain across the 40. And picks up maybe two. Tripped up by Matt Toina. Toina has replaced Tommy Harris, who went to three straight Pro Bowls, but now he comes off the bench. Yeah, Toina, I think he's come in and, and really has done a nice job. He's a big body there in the middle. Tommy Harrison talking with Lovey Smith the other day he said we still expect him to play at a much higher level even though he hasn't played at that level in quite some time. Harris is checked in the game. And a nice throw and this time a catch is made down the middle of the field of the backup tight end Fred Davis who got a lot of playing time after Cooley broke an ankle last season. Trent Williams the rookie left tackle does a good job here on on Julius Peppers and you know Donovan throwing another one of those low balls if he's able to get it up into the arms of Fred Davis and let him run he's able to pick up considerable more yardage but Fred Davis is is one of those guys who they really do expect a lot from and he was slow developing in the old system and he's been a little slow coming along in Shanahan's offense but I think he's got big days ahead of him. Well they lay it off for Cooley. And he's chased down by Tolina. That'll be a pickup of five. And let's send it again back to Los Angeles to Kurt Menefee. After that 0-5 start, the Niners trying to make it two wins in a row today at Carolina. Alex Smith hooking up with Vernon Davis for a 53-yard reception down at the one-yard line. But that's okay. Same two hooked up very next play for the touchdown. 7-3 right now. Niners on top. Tom Troy and Pan. Kurt, thank you. Second down and five. No score midway through the opening quarter at Soldier Field. <laughs> Sellers out of the backfield has a first down to the 22 yard line. Thought it was interesting. Lovey Smith said Mike Sellers was. In his opinion, the most impressive offensive player for the Redskins that that he had watched this week on film, and I think that's a, I think that's a compliment to Mike Sellers as opposed to 
disparaging comment to the other guys but he does it all he's such a versatile player he's an excellent blocker from the fullback position and then he catches the ball well coming out of the backfield. Terrain leaps over the first would be tackler Julius Peppers and then is chopped down for a four yard loss they're off flags on the play. Holding number 77 offense 10 yard penalty first down. That's a long time Saint Jamal Brown. This offensive line for the Redskins they, they've had their share of problems this year as well trying to develop some continuity we'll see if we can see the hold here Looks like it might have been there on Julius Peppers you see him as Peppers goes inside Jamal Brown's the one who gets the hold on him but you know last week in that loss to the Indianapolis Colts both Trent Williams and Jamal Brown they had their hands full. McNabb. Has it intercepted. And racing the other way is DJ Moore for a touchdown. Jay put the pressure on Donovan McNabb and then Moore picks it off and races 54 yards for the game's first score. DJ Moore brings the pressure off the edge and Donovan simply never saw it. You're going to see DJ Moore here coming on the blitz. Donovan does not recognize it. Israel Adonaje is the one who bats the ball up in the air and DJ Moore after making the play on McNabb is right there then to catch the deflection. All smiles DJ Moore his third interception of the season. No smiles on that sideline. I think you see Kyle Shanahan talking to him now saying you know that's the guy that you as the quarterback have to account for. You know, they block down with their left tackle Trent Williams and when he blocks down it opens up the edge and they brought DJ Moore off of that edge and that's the guy who Donovan has to see and then the wide receiver has to recognize it so they can get the ball out quickly Donovan expecting to be protected never saw DJ on the blitz. It's only the seventh turnover by this Washington offense so far this season. They protected the ball very well. I don't know who's happier about that interception for a touchdown, DJ Moore or offensive coordinator Mike Martz. <laughs> It out to the 28 yard line. Take a look at it one more time from behind the defense. You're going to see number 30 there, DJ Moore. You know, he's the one who gets the free look. It looked like Chris Cooley would have been the hot read had Donovan had seen the blitz, that he would have then come out and hit Chris Cooley right away. He was working back into that voided zone. D.J. Moore's been a nice pickup for the Chicago team. A fourth-round draft choice last year out of Vanderbilt has gotten more and more playing time in this his second year. Terrain runs hard right up the gut up to the 34-yard line. Boy, so, run hard is is exactly right, Tom. I mean, this guy, I, I think he always runs hard, and he's trying to make the most of an opportunity. You know we talk about it when we've had Redskins everybody does with the injury problems that he's had but now coming into this game just over 60 rushing attempts you know now is the time where the body starts to feel some of those hits 
on a weekly basis and I think now we're going to get a pretty good gauge as to how well he's holding up physically. McNabb looking down the field. And he'll slide up to the 36 yard line. It'll bring up third down and two. Well, pretty good coverage this time by the Chicago Bears. They get McNabb outside the pocket and, you know, obviously plenty of time to get the ball out of his hands, but the Bears do a good job of recognizing it, and that's going to be important. And even old Julius Peppers, he had gotten about 15, 20 yards down the field dropping into coverage. A little different defense today from the one we saw last week in that loss against Seattle. Wide open across the middle Santana Moss and that's a first down. Moss the fourth most receptions in all the NFL. What a start for him and this is 10th year. Well it sure is and here's what here's a ball that you know not a bad throw obviously right on him and, and he jumps. I'm not sure that Santana Moss really needed to leap in order to catch that ball and if he had kept his feet he's one on one on the safety he makes him miss he's off and so. You know what I've noticed in really watching this offense for the Redskins you know so many times if these guys are able to catch the ball and stay on their feet a lot of yardage left to be had. And they're heavy pressure again. Let's check in downstairs with Pam. Well Tom Lance Briggs has re-entered that ankle. He is out of the game at the moment. Lance Briggs is questionable with that ankle injury. Back to you. All right, Pam thanks. He of course did not play last week against Seattle practiced all week. And they felt he was ready to go but with an ankle oftentimes like we've seen with groin injuries hamstring injuries they can come back in a hurry. Yeah, and so they go with Brian Ewu who spelled Lance Briggs last week and, and actually did a pretty good job. He's, he's not Lance Briggs. This is not as good a defense when he's not on the field. Screen to Cooley. Cuts it back to the inside escaped a tackle from Julius Peppers and picks up close to nine. Cooley another injured Redskin last week suffered a concussion early in a game stayed in the game and finally had to leave in the fourth quarter well, and you just kind of wonder I mean, he had that drop there on that first possession and, and I'm not suggesting that he shouldn't be playing but you don't see Chris Cooley drop that many passes you know you just wonder if maybe he is still not quite a hundred percent peppers to the sideline. On a third and a yard. Cooley again. Boy, when he's healthy, there might be some guys around the league that get a lot more pub, but Cooley is rock solid at that tight end position. Well, he's just got a good feel. You know, I don't know that Chris Cooley's healthy, though, right now. I mean, he's not moving particularly well. He did a great job on that last play of seeing Tim Jennings out in front of him and giving Donovan a place to go with the ball for the first down. You're going to see as he comes across the formation, Tim Jennings right there, but then he pulls up, so Donovan has a place to go. But you talk about him he's a valuable guy to this offense as good as he is a receiver I, I think he's an excellent blocker something that I think goes unnoticed but he is able to block the point of attack very well in the run game. Strong running again from terrain boy is he impressive. You see piece of Tino Isamoa he's the one who comes in and, and levels the hit. On Chris Cooley, I, I, it didn't look like it was a blow to the head. He was going off, looking as if it might have been something to his to his lower body. But obviously, a concern based on the fact that he played last week after getting head in the head in the head, as you said, and and that's always a concern when you've got a guy coming back from that type of injury. Washington trailing seven nothing, but on the move. Terrain spun down at the 23 yard line. You, know, you talk about the Bears and Mike Martz and, and when you're not running the ball particularly well and then getting away from it pretty quickly because of your philosophies and what you want to do then offensively. You know the Redskins aren't that type of offense Mike Shanahan Kyle Shanahan if they're struggling running the ball early like they did last week against the Indianapolis Colts. They're going to stick with it I mean, they're going to continue to try to pound the ball and have it pay dividends when you get into the fourth quarter. That's what this offense is built around. So Cooley checks back in ninth play of the drive good protection wide open and a touchdown.
to Santana Moss. Moss, his second touchdown reception of the year. Well, great protection up front, and then Donovan McNabb's going to deliver a strike. Outside double move. Santana Moss starts to the post, back to the corner, and then when he makes that move right there, it gets Charles Tillman well on his outside shoulder and just gives Donovan McNabb a great place to put the football. Now for the point after, Graham Gano. That'll tie it at seven with a minute eight to play. McNabb to Santana Moss. And McNabb, an interception, and now a touchdown. Santana Moss, a 24 yard touchdown reception. And McNabb on that nine play drive hitting on four out of five. And we talked about cooling. Had a concussion last week, and they're working on that right foot, right ankle over on the Redskins sideline now. Good kick by Gano, and Manning going to bring it out. And he's tackled right at the 20 yard line. And you know, Troy, you talked so much coming into this game about the Chicago offense. They have six plays so far and minus four yards. Yeah, <laughs> that's got to get better. You know, I mean, they're fortunate <laughs> that they've got a touchdown because of the defense. And, you know, offensively, we've seen already. They've tried to come out and run the ball. They haven't had the ball very long, but they haven't run it very well. They haven't converted a third down, which has been the story, as we talked about, for, for a while now. But I think now with their defense being out on the field this this is a series right now where they've got to start to develop some type of continuity and rhythm. They fake it to Chester Taylor and a throw a little bit high for Johnny Knox. Now you can see some of what Mike Martz is trying to do is you know when you've got an offense that's struggling every single play becomes a challenge you know when when you're playing at your best you just go play you're not thinking about trying to complete every pass or trying to get first down so much you're just letting it all unflow and I think that the important thing is him trying to get Cutler some easy completions but and as we saw in that last play nothing is easy right now second down blitz coming and somehow Cutler gets out of trouble but runs into more. In the form of Rocky McIntosh. Well, you're going to see a lot of pressure right here, just coming right up on the outside and then pushing the pocket inside as well, and just not a lot of places there for Cutler to move. And and we've seen that a lot. Once Cutler gets on the move, I mean, he is quick to tuck it and then run into more danger. I mean, he had an area where he might have been able to pull it, maybe make something happen, or at least get up the field. And avoid losing the yardage that he lost. Instead, he ran himself right into another side. Third and 15. Flag down, screen to Chester Taylor. And that picks up about five yards. Like Redskins fans, the Bears fans, they know football. They know good football, and they've seen bad football, and they'll admit to both. And this has not been pretty on offense for this Chicago team after a pretty decent start. When the season got underway. And it's this hard. This is the end of the first quarter. So that's the end of the first quarter, a 7 7 game. Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Brad Maynard on the punt, standing at his own five yard line. And Brandon Banks stands at his own 40. Seven seven game as the second quarter is underway. Banks tiptoes out of a couple of tackles and dropped right at midfield. It appeared as O'Brien Arakpo was shaken up 
on that last play a moment ago. Keep an eye on Arakpo number 98. It looked like Hainsworth fell down on top of his right leg. Left leg, I beg your pardon, and that's where Arakpo is reaching at the conclusion of the play. But when you talk about the Redskins defense and the two players that teams really have to worry about, Brian Arakpo and Leron Landry. You take Arakpo out of the mix, I mean you're losing a big part of your of your pressure package. I'll tell you, oh, Albert Hainsworth, he's off to a good start here this afternoon. Handed off to Santana Moss. Three yard loss. Let's send it back to Kurt Menifee in Los Angeles. It is early, but Cleveland looking good in New Orleans. The pitch to Peyton Hill as he takes it in for a four yard run. Cleveland's up 10 0, and they just intercepted Drew Brees, so the offense has the football back again in the second quarter. Tom Troy and Cam. That New Orleans defense, which relied on so many takeaways, Troy, we were talking about it before the game today. Hard to count on those things every single year. Well, it sure is, and it, it's been a it's been a struggle each and every week for that Saints team. Play action, great protection, and a good throw. And it's Anthony Armstrong to the Chicago 30-yard line. Just a really nice job up front. A lot of times when you go play action, it's the best protection you can afford yourself up front, and he gets great protection on that play. And Anthony Armstrong running a deep crossing route, and this is a heck of a throw right here by Donovan McNabb, laying it over the linebackers and then into the arms of Anthony Armstrong. Anthony Armstrong got his chance to be a starter what last week, and you know a real flyer, and he's done a nice job with his opportunities. And really that's a story for a number of these Redskins not only Anthony Armstrong who played you know in the intense football league then went on to play in the arena league signed with Miami was only there for a short time the Redskins put him on their practice squad and here he is a starter and then you look at terrain who injured his knee with Denver in 08 didn't play at all last year and now after injuries to Portis and the release of Larry Johnson he's their featured back. Well they're they're both well traveled Armstrong more than terrain but they've been making an impact. Erlacher's been making an impact for quite a while. Healthy again is Brian Erlacher. NFL Defensive Player of the Year going back to 05 broke his wrist in the first game of last season against Green Bay and they're happy to have him back and healthy and playing like Brian Erlacher again. Blitz coming. Look like Moss just lost his footing. Pretty good design there too. They brought the pressure to McNabb's front side, and if they don't hit Moss, they could have came into Chris Cooley right up the seam, and he would have had a nice gain. But you know, you're right; there was no opportunity there with Moss going to the ground. This will be a 46-yard field goal try for Graham Gano. His season long is 49 in Week One against Dallas. And it's good. So the Redskins have their first lead of the game, 10-7. Welcome back to Soldier Field in Chicago. 12:09 to play until halftime, and the Redskins, who statistically anyway, have completely dominated this game, but only a three-point lead. The interception thrown by McNabb after the ball was batted in the air and returned 54 yards by D.J. Moore started the scoring. McNabb to Santana Moss to tie it. And now a field goal to give the Redskins the lead. Very short kick and that's a live ball. Flag comes in late as Danielle Manning was leveled at the 20. During the return, holding number 21, 
receiving team. Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. I'd like to remind you there's a new way to play fantasy football, make real time substitutions in a 20 minute fast paced game. New game start every 15 minutes. So play now at foxsports.com slash live. Chicago offensively in the first quarter. Nine plays minus five yards. Good start to the second quarter. Boy, they needed that. They needed something positive to happen for him. Johnny Knox is a guy who Mike Marks just thinks is going to be exceptional within this offense because he has great speed and he has great quickness. Two things that are really required to play wide receiver within this scheme that Mike Marks employs. And they said coming into this game, we need to get the ball into Johnny Knox's hands more in this game. Brian Arakpo is back in there for Washington. That'll be a false start against Chicago. False start, number 74, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. That's Chris Williams, the left guard, third, starting his third position in his last nine games going back to last year. They think he can make a heck of a guard. He's got great size, he runs awfully well. Of course, they drafted him to be the left tackle. So things have certainly changed in that regard. Remember earlier in the in the game, he's the one who gave up the sack, and that's really what's happened with this line. They've been they've been outmanned more than anything else this year. Cutler hit again. Yeah, they're trying to slow up the pass rush a little bit and, and get the ball into Matt Forte's hands on the screen. It's something that that he does very well. Matt Forte does. And they felt that you know maybe these are some of the things that we can take advantage of and slow down the pass rush get the ball into the hands of one of our better players but LaRon Landry comes through gets pressure on Jay Cutler before it's even able to develop. Second down and 15 good protection this time. The receiver fell down Devin Hester. And nearly made the catch from his knees. So another third and long upcoming for Cutler and the Bears. And again, if you're just joining us, with Jay Cutler at quarterback, and remember he missed a game after getting sacked nine times against the Giants, left with a concussion, was sacked six times when he came back last week. Oh, for his last 25 on third down. Well, that's. Probably going to be 0 for 26 because there's not a lot of plays that allow you to convert on third and 15. And he sacked for the third time in the game. A rack pull with number six on the year. You're going to see Arakpo come off the edge, but you also got to see Chris Williams right here, the left guard, and the job that he does or doesn't do. He just, you know, you get the edge pressure, but then you've got to be able to step up. And Chris Williams now, on two occasions, has turned guys loose. That time, Bonnie Holiday. And they come right up in there and are there to make a play. Short punt. This will be. The fourth time in the game already that the Redskins have basically gotten the ball in midfield. A 10-7 Washington lead. Ten twenty-one to play until halftime. Mike Tice talking things over with his offensive line. There's been a lot of talking going on. I, I think I'd start yelling. Poorly thrown ball there by McNabb to Mike Sellers. Boy, and you can't ask for better field position for McNabb and the Redskins. Three times in the game they've gotten the ball right at midfield, and the average starting position their own 40. Well, you you know obviously right now this offense for the Bears is struggling today, and they have been for the last few weeks. But you know at some point the offensive line just got to block. You can say 
you know Mike Marks should run the ball. He should say he can keep people in and block, which he's done. He's run the ball. He's tried a lot of different things, screen passes. But if you're not blocking up front, you have no chance. And right now, those guys, they've been getting a pass for the last few weeks. They have not done a very good job. They've done a horrible job. Cooley on the reception up to the 46. Let's check in again with Kurt back in L.A. Pittsburgh fumbled on his first two possessions. Miami only got two field goals. Steelers made him pay. Good run after the catch by Hines Ward. Taking it in from the 21 yards out. And the Steelers take the lead just like that. It's now a 10-6 ball game in the second quarter. Tom Troy and Pam. Boy, Hines Ward, there are receivers to get more pub, but what a great career he's had for the Steelers. Well, which is what I like about him anyway. Not only is he a great receiving wide receiver, but he's a great blocking wide receiver. McNabb steps up. Nowhere near the intended target. Anthony Armstrong so the Redskins will punt it again after getting the ball right at the 50. Yeah good job there defensively by the Bears Keelan Williams the running back for the Redskins he went out on a swing route everybody dropped deep he, if they had been able to get the ball into his hands there was nobody out there along the sideline Donovan McNabb just failed to see him. Hunter Smith they're just not going to punt the ball to Hester today. No, that's smart. You know, I mean, right now the Redskins have got to be thinking the only way they're going to get points is the way they did. Either a defensive turnover or Devin Hester returning a kick. Bears back on offense, trailing 10 7. They have one first down so far today. London Fletcher on the tackle of Matt Forte. <laughs> These fans, they, 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 like, they like the call and they, they like the production there. <laughs> you know, but you and I were talking in, in the break, and I thought, you, you know, when you point out about sooner or later, it doesn't matter if you're running or passing, you have to block people. They had run the ball three times in the game for a total of one yard before that carry. And a good carry it was, a gain of six. I'll do it again. And close to a first down is Forte depending on the spot. You know I ran into some Bear fans last night Tom and, and was talking to them about their team and, and what they said was you know probably echoed by all Bear fans and that we need to run the ball and, and that's kind of the mentality I'm not saying they're wrong but that's kind of the mentality around the league is that whenever things aren't going well and you haven't run the ball just run the ball and magically that changes everything but the Bears have not been a good running team for quite some time Matt Forte you take the Carolina game out a few weeks ago he's averaging two and a half yards a carry they're going to run a third in the yard and just Chester Taylor has dropped for a loss Hainsworth pretty active today you can see the big man right here in the middle 92 and he just moves right through Olin Krutz. And Lance Lewis there was trying to slow him down and you know this is the type of disruption that that Albert Hainsworth can create and that's why Jim Hazlitt and Mike Shanahan they want him on the field. That is a drama that seems to never end for Mike Shanahan and the Redskins as Banks brings it up to the 44 yard line. The trade deadline came and went, and Hainsworth still a Redskin. McNabb to the field, leading by three. McNabb, an interception in the first quarter, returned 54 yards by D.J. Moore, but then tied the game on a touchdown pass to Santana Moss. And a field goal the difference as Washington has the football with under eight minutes to play until halftime and no running room for terrain. Well, we talked about it, Tom. The the Redskins, you know, really to have 10 points probably should have a lot more than that, considering the field position that they've been afforded here in this first half. And there's no doubt, based on what we're seeing from the Bears offensively, that this defense is going to be held responsible for trying to keep them in the ball game. Bad 
batted down again by Adonishe. Adonishe having his best season. He won the job over Mark Anderson during the preseason and has played very well. Yeah, he really has. And, uh, you know, it's primarily a special teams player. And then he got his opportunity to play on defense and doing a pretty good job. But I know Lovey, St Lovey Smith still expects more from that guy playing opposite of Julius Peppers. And Julius Peppers, as we know, he creates a lot of attention and people are going to slide protection to him. And it should free up some things for Israel Adonaje and whoever else lines up opposite. Third and 11 blitz coming and it's batted at the line of scrimmage three and out again for the Bears defense. Chris Harris delivered a lick on Donovan McNabb. Yeah the Bears they dialed it up a little bit you're going to see Chris Harris come in from the safety position and Keelan Williams who's a good blocker he has to make a decision OK who am I going to take he takes the most dangerous Tino Isamoa and it frees up Harris and McNabb just gets it out of his hands. Hester getting a chance to return a punt for the first time in a game. A flag is down. And Hester tiptoes out of bounds close to the 20, but again, a flag all the way back to the 28 yard line. Well, they initially signaled against Washington, and then the signal went against Chicago. So now Walt Anderson. Illegal formation, number 58 of the receiving team was lined up over the center. Washington has elected and forced the five-yard penalty at the end of the run. First down. That's against Rod Wilson, and his penalty last week nullified a kickoff return for a touchdown. One of the great all time Chicago Bears Richard Dent then and now Super Bowl MVP and Super Bowl 20. Today the president and CEO of RLD Resources a telecom and energy management company and his make a dent foundation helps needy kids to get college scholarship money still looks good. Well he sure does and a number of Bears here at the ball game today former Bears Gail Sayers was here he looks great and you know how about that the 85 Bears defense still the gold standard I mean as good as the Pittsburgh Steelers have been over the years and the Baltimore Ravens that 85 Bears defense is still the gold standard and 25 years ago they've got the reunion coming up next month here in Chicago and I guess Mike Ditka will be here for that as you would expect and Buddy Ryan's going to come back mm -hmm. as well but Congratulations once again to all those folks that were a part of that great great Super Bowl team. They had a handful of them here today but as Troy mentioned Gail Sayers Otis Wilson. Keith Van Horn their great tackle out of USC. Well they had about eight ten guys from that 85 Bears team here today. Well they're going to need this defense today to play like the 85 Bears if they're, <laughs> they're going to stay in well, it. The huh? receiving team has declined. It'll be first down Chicago. Well, I took a while to figure out. One first down. On their first drive of the second quarter. And then on a third and one they couldn't convert. Their last possession. One yard averaging per play. But they're only down three. Forte. Read beautifully by big number 97, Lorenzo Alexander. You know, there's so many things that, that Mike Marks would like to be able to get to in this game. And, and if they can get protection, and that's that's obviously a big if, and it has been. But if they're afforded some protection he's got some things that he feels that he can take advantage of with this secondary here of the Washington Redskins everyone else has I mean they've been given up over 400 yards of offense or to the opposing offenses throughout the first six games of the season and that's not by chance I mean there's there's some holes there but I know it's frustrating right now for Mike Mars he's trying to protect his quarterback and maintain some type of balance and can't get to those things short drop catch made by Hester. 
And you can't play it defensively any better than Carlos Rogers just did. Oh, and this is, uh, you know, we talked to Jim Hazlitt, and he said, hey, the reason we've been giving up so many yards is because we've we've played against Tony Romo and Matt Schaub and Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning and some awfully good offenses, and and all that's true. And typically, you're playing against pretty good offenses or pretty good quarterbacks each and every week. This might be that game to where they're able to come down considerably in the rankings. Another third down. 0 for 5 so far. Batted down. Crowd wanted a flag. And Leron Landry knocked it away. You're going to see they run a corner route here with Greg Olson, and, and not a bad route. It's just that Leron Landry is waiting on the throw, and, and it looked like they could have maybe called contact before the ball arrived. That's a tough one. He, could, he definitely came over the back, but was there contact made prior to him hitting the ball? And Leron Landry, you talk about guys off to great years. Leron Landry is getting some attention around the league, and you know it's a little early, but I'd be surprised if we're not seeing him going over to Hawaii for the Pro Bowl. Certainly among the most athletically gifted players in the league. Banks will call for a fair catch of the 30. Well, we know who will play in the fall classic right here on Fox starting Wednesday night. Game one, the Texas Rangers make their first ever appearance in the World Series against Tim Lincecum and the Giants. The Giants have never won the World Series since moving to San Francisco. Fox Sports coverage begins Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, Ken Rosenthal on the coverage. Well, somebody is going to get to win their first. You know, the Rangers had never even won a playoff series, and now they're going to their first World Series. And I can tell you, living in the North Texas area, that area is psyched for the Texas Rangers. Nice play there by Tommy Harris. Of course, you've always been there for him. You've never been a bandwagon guy. <laughs> you know, I'm for a lot of teams. I'm I, I'm for winners. Is the way I look at it. <laughs> Looks like the email you know you sent me last week. I said, "Are you rooting for our Buckeyes?" He said, "I'll let you know in an hour." That's right. That's right. I wasn't rooting for him. <laughs> well, you're cold. <laughs> Has to get rid of it. Under heavy pressure from Pisa Tino E. Samoa, healthy and playing well again after signing last year, leaving St. Louis. Yeah, and give the Bears some credit for what they're doing defensively right now. I mean, they're they're under a lot of pressure right now, having to keep this team in it. And you know, for the most part this year, it's it's a defense that I think their rankings a little exaggerated because they held Carolina and then Detroit. Under 200 yards of total offense. Other than that, teams have moved the ball, but they've just found a way to make a play. Cooley trying to get to the first down marker. I think he's about a foot short. You know, I thought it was awfully close. You saw Chris Cooley stretch out his arms trying to get it to the marker. I, I'm not so sure that I wouldn't challenge this. If I'm Mike Shanahan, I don't know if there's a look that will show if he was able to get it to the first down mark. But right here, when he stretched it out, it was awfully close. Boy, Israel Adonijay, he's, he's downfield in the middle of that one as well. So the Bears going to get it back. Nearly blocked. And they just punted out of bounds. Corey Graham nearly got that one. Jay Cutler under pressure is nothing new. And under pressure again today. Well, it was right from the first series of the game is when you know he started seeing it again and, and as a quarterback you know you start getting a little nervous within the pocket you don't you don't trust that you're going to be afforded the protection you start trying to rush throws and probably the worst thing that can happen is you start looking at the rush as opposed to looking down the feet down the field reading coverages and it's hard to get away from that when you've been hit as many times as Cutler has flags down Cutler gets it away and incomplete. 
And that's a ball that Greg Olson's got to make. Olson has not caught a pass in the last three Chicago games, and that's including today. Offside, number 98, defense, five yard penalty, still first down. And you see Greg Olson, he's got to work back into the ball here, and, and even without doing that, the ball hit him right in the hands. And you know, Greg Olson is another guy coming into the game that Mike March said we need to get it in his hands more. They, like you said, they have not been able to, of course, the game against Carolina. You know, he didn't have a catch, but who did? You know, they only completed six passes. Todd Collins threw almost as many to the other team in that one. Lester. And a first and five, and they convert to get a first down. They're getting a standing ovation. <laughs> Little front running going on right now. Well, I don't know if it's front running or not. I think they just they just want something to cheer about. It's a great sports town. Sure is. Great town, period. Right at midfield, catch made by Earl Bennett. You know, we still see, and, and I understand it. You know Mike March he's a guy who wants to get vertical uh, but what they have thrown has has been the intermediate to shallow stuff and you know so they can get the ball out of Cutler's hands and he's still learning this offense you know there's a lot of things sometimes you know we talk about the offensive line not doing their job well Cutler's still adjusting to this style you know it's much different from anything that he's done in the past. They get a rack pull again lining up off sides. That's a penalty I think most fans they just say how in the world is that happen? Number 98 defense lined up in the neutral zone five yard penalty first down. You know those good pass rushers they, they want to crowd the line as as much as they can so they can get there as quickly as they can. And they've now caught a rack pull here twice on this series. But I mean you think about it as and I think that's what has to be discussed at halftime for the Bears as bad as it's been offensively we can't play any worse. It's a 10 7 game and if they do something here it's either tied up or they're going to be leading at half. Bears have all three timeouts along with a two minute warning. Quick throw catch made again by Bennett. He's see Jim Hazlitt as soon as as soon as they go to empty set they blitz it and LeRon Landry I mean this guy just flies around and, and he he loves being around the action in you know previous years he was playing more coverage than what we've seen of him this year this year with Jim Hazlitt as a defensive coordinator he's around the ball he's a physical guy and he's just a heck of a player. Well, we have reached the two minute warning and the Bears for the first time all day on the move offensively. Well after missing the last couple of games the big fella's been in there a lot today. This will be his 14th play. On defense. It's Greg Olson the tight end. Johnny Knox. To the 25, and that'll be a first down for Chicago. That was close to being a lot better than what it was. Johnny Knox, he hits him on the back shoulder, which kind of forces him then to spin back out to his left. And had he have been able to keep his feet, D'Angelo Hall, he had overrun it. And he likely is able to go up the sideline for a touchdown. Knox on pace for a 1,000 yard receiving season. The Bears haven't had one of those since Marty Booker in the 2002 year. That's really something too, considering how this league has changed into a passing league. First time out spent by Cutler and the Bears, who Troy, I thought you brought up a boy a point right on the nose per usual. You can't play worse on offense, and Chicago had played until this drive, and now all of a chance 
to either tie it with a field goal or take the lead for a touchdown. Yeah, I think they've got to feel pretty good about that part of it. And then offensively, even though it has obviously been a struggle, this possession has, has been good. You know, I mean, Jay Cutler has, has gotten the ball out. Again, they haven't been able to get to the things they'd really like to get to in order to exploit this Redskins defense. But I think Mike Marks has made some nice adjustments here on this possession, just trying to get the ball out, get some things positive happening. And more importantly, they've converted a few third downs. Cutler four out of four on his drive, a first and ten to the 25-yard line. Short drop again, and knocks again. I guess I shouldn't say they've converted third downs as much as they've gotten first downs. They've still yet to convert on a on a third down. But you see that throw there by Jay Cutler and another slant route. You know those are high percentage throws working against D'Angelo Hall and. I think from that then in the second half assuming that you can get some type of protection up front you start seeing the ball go down the field just a little bit more. Under a minute to go. Forte. Dropped to the 10 by Rocky McIntosh and I'm sure that fans at home. Uh, you know, are liking what's happening here as well. You know, on this drive, of course, they're coming to the end of the first half, but zero runs on this drive. Think anybody in the stands is talking about that right now? Well, I just think that it, when it works, everybody's happy, and when it doesn't work, then it all goes back to, well, let's run the ball. And, you know, I think that at the end of the day, you do what you have to do to try to win a game or to try to score points. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily involve running. Coming up, it'll be the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will be along with scores and highlights. Boy, there are some stunners going on around the NFL right now. Baltimore getting blasted by Buffalo. Talk about New Orleans trailing against Cleveland. To the end zone. Touchdown, Johnny Knox. Well, I'll tell you what, Jay Cutler keeps that play alive. He got pressure to his blind side, and it shows the arm strength that Cutler has because that was a ball that he barely got in there and a dangerous throw there to the corner to knock. You know, he spots him late right here, and he guns it in there, but you had LaRon Landry and then Buchanan sandwiched between them. Point after is good. So by far and away, the best drive of the day for Chicago ends in a touchdown. Yeah, Johnny Knox, you know, if he's going to get the ball, he's going to get it right away. But once he got there, he stayed put. And it was a, it was a nice job of him of, of recognizing that it was zone coverage and where he was best suited to be to get the ball thrown into him. And that was a tight ball, but it was great arm. It was, a, as I said, it was a great illustration of the arm strength that Jay Cutler has in order to fit that pass in. Seventy yards on seven plays and Cutler perfect. First touchdown reception of the year for Johnny Knox, who's having a very good sophomore year. Well, that was a good drive for them, and you know, one that that they'll hope to be able to build upon going into the second half. Well the Redskins have all three timeouts left for under 30 seconds and Banks trying to break it to the outside. And he'll step out of bounds boy you take a peek ahead Troy Aikman and next week the NFL on Fox early the Packers and the Jets and late you and I will be in New England the Vikings. 
and the Patriots. Yeah, I think we've got an, those games right there that you talk about are going to be outstanding games and. You know, I'm interested in that matchup that we're going to see tonight between Minnesota and Green Bay as well and Minnesota with a big win last week. Or what two weeks ago against the Giants or against the Cowboys and then you've got the Packers who've just been decimated with injury. Well McNabb is going to take a knee to end the first half. Bears 14 Redskins 10 stay tuned for the visa halftime report coming after after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Well is there anything better than home cooking we talked about the homecoming for Donovan McNabb and his mom along with some friends and family providing the post game meal for the Redskins afterwards apparently she likes to do that whenever he comes back into town. That's a lot of food she made up huh. Well, I mean you football players can eat a little bit now. Well, <laughs> well, right? Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah you know you look at you know Wilma used to do that all the time when when Donovan was with the Eagles and she would do it the night before a game and I'm not sure exactly why they didn't do it last night but they're going to have a heck of a feast after well, this game. Well obviously we talked so much about how poor the Chicago offense was in the first quarter a very impressive drive to take the lead up until halftime but the Washington offense meanwhile only one first down for Donovan McNabb and the Redskins in the second quarter. Yeah I thought you know Washington overall was was fairly productive moving the ball they just didn't come away with the points and that's why they kept Chicago in it and Chicago's able then to you know they get the interception for a touchdown they get the drive to end the first half. Now they get the ball to start this second half and if they can continue to do what they did there at the end of the first half which I've got to believe they're going to some high percentage passes. Try to keep the chains moving a little bit and use that as the formula for success. Well bear in mind you see the total yards there for the Bears 84. At the end of the first quarter that number read minus six. And the one takeaway by Chicago a McNabb interception by DJ Moore returned 54 yards for a touchdown. Pam Oliver tells us that Lance Briggs is now officially out for the remainder of the game after re injuring his bothersome ankle in the opening quarter. The wind has really picked up as this game has rolled along and very much could be a factor here in the second half. Those old Chicago Bears were standing down there on the field. I mean some of those jackets were nearly getting blown off of. Danielle Manning from the three yard line. And up to the 23. Pam Oliver. Well, what worked for the Bears on that very encouraging scoring drive? Lovey Smith said blocking. He said we just did a better job of it. We seem to coming around in that department. He also said that you know we keep that up. We should be okay. Now for the Redskins, Mike Shanahan talked about what Troy talked about: consistency and them not taking advantage of opportunities. He said if we get that going, we'll be okay. That seems to be the theme of hat time, by the way, Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. Not a lot changes from week to week, does it? Short drop again by Cutler. And I'm not sure Johnny Knox ever saw it coming. And the Bears very lucky that Dowdy didn't intercept it. Yeah, but this is what I was talking about with Jay Cutler. And, and this is how the offense is designed. It's designed for the quarterback to get back, take a hitch, and get the ball out of his hands. And this receiver, Johnny Knox, he's, he's got to know it's coming. And you've got to get into your routes. And as they continue to develop, that didn't look very good right there. And people say man what's Cutler doing but that's what they want from the quarterback here and as they develop that kind of timing then you're going to see the ball getting out you're going to see guys catching the ball down the field whether guys are turned loose up front or not. Earl Bennett still on his feet fights for additional yardage up to the thirty nine that's a first down. When we talk about this this offensive system that Mike March is, is putting in and it's and it's not just about the offensive line it's not just about Jay Cutler it's also 
about the receivers knowing where they're supposed to be and it's the same offense that I ran in Dallas with Ernie Zampezi and North Turner in fact Mike Marks learned the offense under Ernie Zampezi and what Ernie would say about the receivers or to the receivers be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there that sounds simple but the quarterback just throws it on time and then you've got to be in the right spot. First down carry by Forte up to the 44 yard line tripped up by London Fletcher. You know this uh, this running game and Matt Forte specifically I, I don't know that we really have gotten an opportunity to see what kind of runner he really is. I mean when he's you know since he's been with the Bears there hasn't been a lot of success running the football. I mean he has yet to average four yards or better for a season running the ball. And I don't know how much of that's on him. We all know that the offensive line, you know, well before this year has has had some issues, but they've just not been consistent in, in that part of their game for a while. Blitz coming. And that's the first catch in three games for the tight end, Greg Olson, and that'll be good enough for a first down up to midfield. Well the Redskins they like to, to give a lot of different looks and move people around and try to confuse the offensive line and you know Jake Cutler recognizes that he's going to have a free rusher and so the ball is going to come out and that's why you see Cutler get the ball out as quickly as he did and and Olsen was that outlet for him and made it into a positive play. Close to the end zone, still waiting on an official signal, and apparently just shy of the goal line, but he's down at the one. It was actually pretty good coverage, you're going to see, by Carlos Rogers, but a great throw by Jay Cutler in behind. Had he have tried to lead Earl Bennett up the seam, Carlos Rogers is in pretty good position to make a play on it. Cutler instead throws it on the back shoulder and he's able to make the player Earl Bennett that is and take it in. And it looked to me yeah it looked to me like it was a it was a touchdown. Well, they're going to challenge the Bears sideline Lovey Smith fires that red flag onto the field. Chicago is challenging the ruling on the field that the runner was down short of the goal line. So while they take a look, we'll take a break. Well, you see here, Earl Bennett's got his left knee on the ground, well short of the goal line. Great job there by the camera guys and. You know what could happen Tom is they may even move that ball back. I mean right now it's on the one yard line. And I, I, I doubt they will but there's a chance that he didn't even get to the one yard line. And of course if Lovey Smith were to lose this challenge that means you lose a timeout and the way this game is going it appears to be a, a pretty tightly contested game throughout the entire afternoon that could be a big timeout. Yeah, I, I think some would question, okay, well, you know, why would you challenge it from the one yard line? But I, I think you've got to go play to play when you're, you know, you never know what may happen here on second down. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Runners short of the goal line. Chicago is charged with his first timeout. A big play nonetheless. And it's first and goal just outside the one. Kevin Schaefer, an additional big body, is checked in for Chicago. Well, we'll get an idea right here how much Marks believes in the running game. High formation, Chester Taylor in the game. And they let Cutler take it, and he is met head on by Albert Hainsworth. Did he fumble the ball? Redskins say they have. 
You know, that's you worry about that on the quarterback sneak when you try to extend it across the goal line. There's a lot of bodies there to knock it out of your hand if you don't get it across the goal line. Ruling on the field, the runner's forward progress was not stopped. The ball came loose, recovered by Washington. First down. Wow. A huge play. Well, Albert Hainsworth, he gets a push right there. You see, right over the top, and he gets contact first with Cutler. And as he's trying to extend the ball out, then someone else came in and knocked it loose. It looked like it might have been London Fletcher, but Hainsworth's the one who goes over Olin Krutz, makes a play on Cutler. He's short of the goal line. He extends the arm, and then it was, yeah, it was London Fletcher that came in and knocked the ball out. My oh my that's a heck of a play right there by Albert Hainsworth a big body like that getting up over Olin Krutz. You know it's the center you're always expecting the guy to nose dive you. And the question there with that look is did he break the plane. Well they challenged and lost a moment ago. And they don't challenge before this play and on the first down the quick hit. To Santana Moss. Gives him a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, if you challenge that, if, if, if you challenge the one with Earl Bennett as to whether or not he scored, I, I think it was worthwhile for Lovey then to challenge that play. And I don't know who he's talking with upstairs. But that that looks awfully close to me. I mean, right? I don't know. I don't know if there's enough there that they would have overturned it. What a huge swing from a momentum standpoint. The question is, can the Redskins do anything with it now? McNabb fumbles, but he's able to fall back on it. Ewu was there providing the pressure. Yeah, well, we talked about Julius Peppers and somebody stepping up opposite of him. Israel Donajay does that on this play. He's able to go by Jamal Brown. He gets the pressure then on McNabb and holds him up. And Ewu was there to knock the ball out. And a good break by Washington. And Donovan McNabb being able to recover that fumble. Second down. DJ Moore, a second interception for a touchdown. A flag is down on the field. Before the snap, delay of game, offense, half the distance to the goal, third down. Wow. This has been an unbelievable oh. sequence of plays. That touchdown wiped away on the delay of game. Blake clocked in a right hand corner there you can see double zeros. So now third down from their own three yard line or second down I beg your pardon. And Donovan McNabb's going to get everybody together and try and get things on the right track. There you see down. the play clock. Well, that's two consecutive breaks for the Washington Redskins. Fred Davis, a tight end. Run out of bounds at the 14 yard line. So to bring up third down and nine for Washington. Well if nothing else on on that completion what they were able to do then was afford some room for their punter. Neither team has been good on third down. Bears over six Redskins two out of eight.
short of the first down, the catch made by Moss. Good coverage by DJ Moore. And Washington will punt. You kind of think on that route that Santana Moss would have gotten a little bit more depth. Sometimes, you know, a route will call for X number of yards, but if you know that if you can push it, you know, a few more yards to get the necessary yardage to pick up the first, you, you then do that. Caught the ball, but short of the first down. Toward the sideline again. Boy, and by staying away from Hester, Bears are getting some very good field position on some very short punts. On Fox. A horror show offensively through a quarter and a half for the Bears. And not a way to start it. On this drive as D'Angelo Hall steps in front of the Jay Cutler pass and snatches it away. And that should never happen. Devin Hester has got to come back to the quarterback on that and if nothing else break up the pass. First down for Washington at the nine minute mark in the third quarter after the Jay Cutler interception. Terrain picks up two on first down. And you go back and take a look at it. Here's the safety right here. D'Angelo Hall had no safety help whatsoever. Cutler gets the ball out on time. Initially, it looked like it was going to be an easy reception, but D'Angelo Hall cheats on the route, comes underneath it. You know, had they have run a go route there, it's an easy touchdown, but Devin Hester has to work back to the quarterback when you come out of the break and it's worse than that ball's incomplete and it's not intercepted. Fourteen ten game Chicago in front. It's the best protection he's had in a long time and that's a drop. By Fred Davis third drop today by a Washington receiver and D'Angelo Hall there was a discussion this week about a conflict maybe between he and Jim Hazlitt and a heated discussion during the week whether it was or there, whether there was or wasn't you know we don't really know Jim Hazlitt certainly downplayed that but D'Angelo Hall is a very confident corner and he's a guy who will give up some things he got beat last week in that Indianapolis game. But he gets beat a lot because he takes a lot of chances and when he takes chances a lot of times he's able to make plays as we saw there but that's that's what he's been doing in this league for a long time he's he's pulling the quarterback always looking to jump around. Way down McNabb down the field and this one's intercepted. Danielle Manning. Up to the forty one. That's Look. what Lovey Smith has been wanting to see from Daniel Manning for quite some time. An athletic guy lays out and makes one heck of an interception. A Washington challenge on the field as to whether or not Daniel Manning was downed by contact. Let's check in with Mike Pereira back in Los Angeles. Mike, what do you think? Hey Tom I think there's two things they'll look at in here first they're going to look to see if in fact it is an interception because that's reviewable even though they just cap challenged the down by contact aspect of it but here he's midair controlling the ball he's got to hold on to the ball after he hits the ground he does it's an interception and he has he is down by contact because even though he hasn't completed the catch he's in air with control and if he touches then an opponent as he'll touch 84 right here with his left leg. That puts him down by contact at that point so they'll come back and put the ball there. That looks roughly at about the 23 when Manning got up. The line of scrimmage right now is the 41 so that's a big difference field position wise on this challenge by the Redskins. Yeah it was just a, that was a heck of a play by Daniel Manning laying out and, and, and catching that ball not an easy one and then you got Melton who put a pretty good lick on Donovan McNabb. At the end of that play we talked about it coming into this game Tom the thing that the Redskins had done a good job of throughout you know, most of these games is they protected the ball offensively and then of course they've gotten the takeaways defensively and you know the turnovers offensively today not so much on this one you're giving up a little bit of field position but 
the touchdown that they got to start this game off After the, the, the fumble play, by the McNair. Defender has possession of the ball and maintains control of the ball upon going to the ground. However, his feet are in contact with the receiver, which makes him down by contact at the 22-yard line. Please put 808 on the game clock, and Washington will not be charged with a timeout. So a successful challenge from Mike Shanahan. We thank Mike Pereira back in Los Angeles, a longtime head of NFL officials. There's a contact. Joey Galloway, 84. Legs knocking against one another as Manning made the interception, then went down to the ground, and that's a spot of the ball now at the 22. Meanwhile, Chester Taylor again in the game for Chicago. Matt Forte limped off early in the last series. And this is Taylor. It's up to the 34. Let's check in back in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Ed Reed's first game back for the Ravens. He gets an interception, and the Baltimore offense takes advantage. Flea flicker, Flacco to Anquan Bolden, 34-yard touchdown. The Ravens have scored 17 points in a minute, 12 seconds, and now come back from 24-10 down to lead it 27-24. Tom Troy and Pan. Well, a good one there and a good one here. That's been pretty, but it's a four-point spread, and Chester Taylor again with running room. Back-to-back -back first down carries for Taylor. Up to the 46. Well, I like Chester Taylor. I like the things that he's able to do. He's a versatile player. We're, right now, what we're seeing from Mike Martz is they're going with three wide receivers and they're forcing the nickel package on the field. Five defensive backs for the Redskins. It's the way Indianapolis played them last week. They ran the ball very well in that ball game. And that's right now what the Bears are doing. They tried doing some of that in the first half, but the last two plays, that's why they've had the success running the ball. Forte back in there for Taylor, and he gets the screen. Another first down. Well, these are all the things that, that Mike March kind of talked about that they wanted to do to start this game, and it's just now starting to come together. They tried the screen there in the first half to Matt Forte, had no chance on it then. They come back to it here on this drive, set up very well, and that's three real good plays right now on this drive. 12, 12, and 13 yards. Look at the start and sense for each team. The Bears going in the right direction. Well, it all started with that drive the end of, to, the, to end the first half. Forte met by London Fletcher. Well, Fletcher's been around a long time. His 13th year. 35-year-old Cleveland, Ohio native, and you know, came into the NFL out of John Carroll. And who would have thought that he would have the career that he has had? Well, the big thing is he shows up every week. You know, I mean, he's never missed a game. That's impressive enough for a middle linebacker. Last year, he made his first Pro Bowl and asked him how that felt. He said it felt good, but I got to be honest with you. I feel like I've been playing well enough to make the Pro Bowl for a lot of years. And I think he has, too. Playing in his 199th consecutive game today. That's Taylor again. They brought in Taylor along with Manu Maliuna and Julius Peppers on the very first day of free agency. And here Taylor, seven weeks into the year, only averaging seven touches per game. Paying him a lot of money for no more than he's gotten the ball. He got the ball quite a bit against Carolina, the way they were able to run the ball. But, you know, Chester Taylor is one of those guys that I think, you know, really makes your team. You know, it's one thing when you've got the superstars, but when you've got guys like Chester Taylor, more role players that are versatile and they create matchup problems for a defense. That's when you really start getting good and I think he's a, I think that was a good signing for them even though he hasn't been utilized probably as much as they anticipated when he did sign. Third down Cutler looking around. Catch made by Hester who took a shot from Fletcher but hung on. First third down conversion today. Yeah, you're going to see Matt Forte. He runs what they call a bullets route. They like it a lot. He's going to come here to the to the flat and then in the seam and that's who Cutler wants to throw it to initially Redskins cover that up good and 
And Culler does a nice job of then getting off of it coming back to Hester. And that's not an easy catch. That was pretty well contested right there by Washington. But a perfectly thrown pass. Great concentration by Hester. Forte to the 15. That third down conversion ended a string of 28 in a row unsuccessful third down conversions with Jay Cutler at quarterback. Well that's what they want to do with Forte is get him out on the edge and Aroma should do comes down and makes just enough of a block there on a rack that that sprung Forte then on the edge. You know we've seen it now ever since that last drive of the first half this is a confident offense the way they're operating. That's how quickly it can turn. Gain of three on first down for Forte. Butler, a quiet opening quarter. And as Troy mentioned, that drive just before halftime to put him in front. He's been mighty good since. Well, and I'll give I'll give Jay Cutler some props because for a guy who's taken the pounding that he's taken, some of that's been his fault too, I might add. But even having said that, he hasn't complained. And this is a tough son of a gun, and he keeps getting up. Forget about the concussion, he did miss the one game, but he keeps getting back in that huddle with those other ten guys, and he plays the best he can. Nice open field tackle made by D'Angelo Hall and a big third down upcoming. If you're the Redskins, you can hold them to a field goal here. You know, even with all your struggles on offense, much like we talked about Chicago in the first half with all their struggles, and they were only down three points. Yeah, I think that's what, you know, for Washington to have allowed Chicago to get down to the one yard line and then not give up any points, they can hold them to a Three point field goal here, that'd be a would be a victory. Blitz coming. And D'Angelo Hall snatches it away and races down the sideline with a man to beat. He got a block, and Hall will go the distance. My oh my. Flag came in during the return on the far side of the field, right in front of the Washington bench. This return, will it come back or will it stand? A 92 yard interception return for a touchdown if it stands. During the return of the interception, personal foul number 73, Chicago. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Score is good. You're going to see Carlos Rogers here is going to come on the blitz and as a result of that Cutler's thrown off his back foot and it's a ball he just threw in behind he couldn't he had no chance of completing that pass but he's trying to give Johnny Knox a chance but because it's behind him you got D'Angelo Hall then who's breaking on the ball from the inside out. It was a relatively easy play then for him to make but it was all brought about because of the pressure of Carlos Rogers and then. Cutler trying to make a play off his back foot and makes an errant throw. Cutler last year led the NFL throwing six red zone interceptions. That's his first this season and he pays for it. I mean that's a, at least a 10 point swing right there. We're talking about what a win it would be for Washington's defense if they only gave up three instead they score touchdown. And that's a third touchdown in the career of D'Angelo Hall. And Cutler and the Bears respond after this body blow. D'Angelo Hall returns an interception 92 yards for a touchdown. The second interception today for Hall. So here in the second half for Chicago, Jay Cutler has fumbled at the one. He's thrown another interception to Hall. And a second one to Hall for a touchdown. So three Jay Cutler turnovers here in the half. 
after the penalty a very short field and Manning's going to bring it out dangerous move here by Manning. We'll go back and take a look at the interception and see Jamarcus Webb here and big Albert Hainsworth's going to come in and, and just lay him out. And then at the end of this play you see D'Angelo Hall he's going to go to his knees. And I think this here should be a penalty for excessive celebration. Now they can go to a knee and, and point to the sky. And that's acceptable. But going to two knees there. I think that should have been flagged. I don't think he and Hazard are going to be having any arguments this week. You. <laughs> Well, if they did have an argument, maybe they'll have another if they're going to get this kind of result. Boy, it's hard. It's hard offensively. You see Jay Cutler's face, and you know they have done some good things here offensively in this second half, and they've moved the ball, and and to get down there twice and not have anything to show for it. I mean, a 10-point swing. On that last play, and then you consider the fact that the Bears probably would have gotten seven if Cutler doesn't fumble on the quarterback sneak. Olson gets away from McIntosh for an additional five yards, and that'll be a first down to the 31. Well, they've figured some things out here offensively, and I think the biggest thing is that. You know Cutler starting to get better protection and that's usually how this thing happens you know. A lot of times you come in and, and the pass rushers for the other team they're pretty cranked up too and so things happen pretty fast and they happen fast for those offensive linemen and then as you settle in the protection gets a little bit better those defensive guys get a little bit more tired. And you get a little bit more time. Cutler sacked. By Arakpo, his second sack today is seventh of the year. That's the end of the third quarter. Fox NFL Sunday. Or we wait, there's still six seconds left. The clock sucks. They're going to crank it right back up, so it will take us down to the end of the quarter. We got a good one here 17 14. And we're back after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Jay Cutler has thrown a pair of interceptions. He's fumbled at the one yard line. Johnny Knox with a receiving touchdown. Well, you look at that third quarter. And the Bears on the season still scoreless in the third quarter. Underthrown ball. It'll bring up third down. And you go back to that last play when Cutler got sacked. Take a look at Greg Olson and London Fletcher comes underneath that just as Cutler is wanting to throw the ball. If he throws that one, he then he throws another interception, and you know he didn't have any time to go anywhere else because of a rack bow. But that's the that's one of those times when you you're okay taking the sack as opposed to turning one loose and then having Fletcher intercept it. You know, that last ball there to Olson, they had a had a pretty good chance there to complete that pass. It would have been a would have been a first down. Third and 12. It was broken up by McIntosh, and then it looked like Olsen made the catch. Yes, it is a reception. Now, well, Jay Cutler just gives Olsen an opportunity. Now, this is great coverage. See, Olsen, he just goes up. I mean, Rocky McIntosh was in perfect position. Cutler, because of the height advantage that Olsen has, throws it up, and even then took great concentration on Olsen's part to bring that one in. Heck of a play. Well, they convert a third down for the second time in a game. Devin Hester. Good tackle by Hall. Arakpo is chopped down by Olin Cruz. Well, we talked about the fact that, that Olsen hadn't had any catches the last couple of weeks, and you know, here's a guy who led their team in receptions last year and trying to get him the ball more. But when, when you've got someone like him with his kind of size and his athletic ability, it was good to see Jay Cutler just just give him a chance, especially on third and long. Fourth 
Tang. On second and four. That's a first down. They're starting to get that running game going a little bit better here, too. Well, early on, they couldn't couldn't get anything going with the running game. Looking at second and long each time they attempted it on first down, and we're starting to see them open some things up a little bit more now. Also, 60 rushing yards in the third quarter after getting only six rushing yards in the first half. Well, they're still going to the three wide receiver sets, trying to get Washington and Nickel People five DBs to run it. Forte fumbled the ball. And another Chicago turnover. Fourth of the game. McIntosh stripped it away. You're going to see Rocky McIntosh. He comes in with the left hand and is able to knock it out. Forte, who had two fumbles in their week one win against Detroit had not had a fumble in any of the other games last year for a non quarterback second most fumbles in the National Football League right behind Adrian Peterson. Three big turnovers here in the second half for Chicago and Ryan Terrain took a big hit but stays on his feet Harris making contact along with Jennings let's go back to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Bengals were down to the Falcons 24 3 at halftime, but 22 unanswered points in the third quarter changed it. Adam, don't call me Pac Man Jones with a strip and return. 62 yards for the touchdown, and the Bengals lead it 25 24 to start the fourth quarter. Tom Troy and Pam. 17 14 here, Kurt. Terrain. A first down and then some. Still on his feet all the way to the 42 yard line. You know, I talked about Chris Cooley earlier in the game and, and how good he is as a blocker and you're going to see him motion across. He had motion across already. You can see him right here 47 and he just does a nice job on the kick out enough and then Ryan terrain you're hard. It's hard to bring him down when you're going down around his ankles as we saw there by a piece of Tino Isamoa and once he gets up ahead of steam he's, he's a difficult man to bring to the ground. Keelan Williams a rookie out of LSU. Picks up maybe a yard. We invite you to go to NFL.com's Game Center for week five live game stats. Week seven as well. You can have fan discussions. In game video highlights and more only at NFL.com slash scores. Everything going on in week seven. Terrain. Another big run. Inside the 25, all the way down to the 22. Well, that's that stretch play, of Ryan Terrain, and you know they do a good job up front, and then Ryan Terrain's going to put his foot in the ground and get going north and south. Chris Cooley once again, and Matt Toina, he had a chance to to make a play, and he fails to make it. And like I said, if you're going to hit Ryan Terrain, you want to get a hold of him at the line of scrimmage because once he starts up the field. And gets ahead of steam going. He's a big physical guy. 55 of those 89 yards rushing for Terrain have come on this drive. Trying to add to it and will. And the ball is loose. Picked up by Tillman. So Washington gives it away in the red zone. Josh Bullocks. Backup safety replacing the injured Chris Harris. Strip that ball away. You asked a question during the commercial break, Troy Aikman. Who wants this game? Yeah, who wants it? Take a look at Pino Pisa Tino Isamoa right there, 59. Once Bullock's had a hold of terrain, he came in with the left hand 
and just punched it out went right for the ball. 10 15 to play here in the fourth quarter Washington with a three point lead and Cutler to throw it on first down from his end zone. The last four possessions for Chicago. They've turned it over four times. Well you got to give credit to Washington defensively. I mean that's that's what they've done. I mean they haven't given up the yardage today primarily because they were so good in the first half. That they've been given up for the year but they're continuing to do the things in terms of takeaways that has kind of been their signature here through the first part of this season. Third interception for D'Angelo Hall. And the question bears repeating. Which team wants to win this game? Well, you see Jay Cutler. Johnny Knox has got to stay on the route. You're going to see that D'Angelo Hall breaks across his face, but Johnny Knox has got to stay on the move. You can't. When there's a route that's contested, you can't just then stop on the route because that's what happens when you do. Last five possessions for Chicago. Each possession ending in a turnover. You know, Marks just looks like he's a, about to vomit over there on the sidelines with everything that's happened here today. And you know he knows it too. You know you try to get the ball out something quick and <laughs> oh Johnny Knox just that's going to look like it's on Jay Cutler but that's on Johnny Knox. Corrine took a big hit. Julius Peppers. Take another look at this. It's a slant route, and you've got to work hard. You've got to do everything you can to get under that guy's face and break it up. And Jay Cutler was going there right from the snap of the ball, and this is Mike March's reaction to it all. Julius Peppers shaking up. On that first down carry, but he stays in the game. Cooley loses the ball and just punches it out of bounds alertly. Very close to a first down inside of five and nearly a seventh turnover. Eighth turnover in his half. Well, you see Tillman. I mean, he punched at the ball also. You know, that's not unique just to the Bears. We see that around the league. All these defenses, they're just going for the football. And, you know, with Washington down here where they are, the Bears are trying to get the ball on the ground as best they can. A good play by Tillman and a, and a nice play, as you said, by Chris Cooley knocking that out of bounds. Illegally, illegally batting the ball forward, number 47. Starting to say, it's a 10 yard penalty. It's still second down. They dropped the flag there well after the play was over. And of course, that goes back to the old Dave Casper rule there, yeah. where he illegally touched the ball and knocking it out of bounds. Well, and, and the penalty is of no consequence. I mean, he, he would rather get the penalty and keep possession of the ball as opposed to giving it to the Bears. So, a good play by Cooley. Well, this is a, a very, very big defensive stand for Chicago. You give up the touchdown. Yeah, there's a lot of time left, but you're in a world of trouble. You hold them to a field goal. One possession game. Redskins tried swapping personnel and Chicago was able to match it by bringing in an extra linebacker. Had a wide open Santana Moss and a wide open Mike Sellers. But it's third down. Hey, you know he had a chance if he's able to to fit that one in. But I, I agree with you Tom if this is this is going to be a heck of a defensive stand here. 
if Chicago is able to hold them to three points. Now last time I said that it was an interception for a touchdown. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens here. Ball is loose. And Go ahead. Washington covers it up. And out comes a field goal unit. And again, Adonaje right in the thick of the action. Yeah, he comes along McNabb's backside, and a good job by him. Israel Adonaje has, has played very well. And we talked about you know them needing somebody to step up opposite of Julius Peppers, and, and they've gotten that today. They activated Barry Turner. They thought that they would get more playing time out of him, but Adonaje doing the things that he has done has kept him on the field. Graham Gano. 37 yards out. No good. That's the sound of a missed opportunity. The missed field goal still 17 14 Washington the Bears get the ball at the 27. That was a heck of a job by their defense. I tell you as much as D'Angelo Hall has been jumping routes. I, I think I would try a double move on him here real soon. Right now he's one on one on Hester. Well they go right to Hester. That's the kind of day it's been for both teams. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Who wants it? 740. That would have been a first down, and Knox dropped it. Let's go back to Curtin Menifee in Los Angeles. Well, no dropping this one. Kerry Collins in at quarterback for the injured Vince Young all day long. And, well, this play lasted all day long. 80 yards. Kenny Britt scores his second touchdown of the game. What legal issue off the field? He's a big-time scoring machine. Still, the Eagles lead at 19-17 in the fourth. Tom, Troy, and Pan. All right, a third down for Jay Cutler and the Bears. Under seven and a half to go. Pass complete to Forte, but this may come back. Holding number 73, offense. Ten-yard penalty, still third down. That's Jamarcus Webb, the right tackle. Number 73, you're going to see Andre Carter is who's taking the inside rush, and you know I didn't see much when it when it happened, and I didn't see anything there. I thought they might have gotten. A hold on the other side with with the rack but that's a tough one there as we know these for these third down conversions have been tough to come by and they had a nice one there to Forte. So third and four becomes third and 14. <laughs> Off the helmet of Landry. And all the way back into the arms of Chris Williams that ball hit Landry in the head. I don't know that I've ever seen a ball ricochet quite like that before, but yeah, hits Landry in the head. And then Chris Williams, he, he went after it and he got him a completion. But LeBron Landry, he just wants to hit something. He's not worried about catching it. The thing hits him right in the helmet. He never even got his arms up. And Banks will be stopped at the 42. So we have 6-12 to go at Soldier Field. A three-point Redskins lead. And you see the arms there on LaRon Landry. Heck, maybe he can't get those arms above his head, Tom. I don't know. <laughs> he missed on that opportunity for the interception. Terrain on 
First down, flag comes in. This will be a hold against Washington on first down to back him up. Holding number 78, offense. Ten yard penalty, still first down. Of course, Donovan McNabb, the starter for Washington. His backup is Rex Grossman. Chicago's 22nd pick back in 2003. Played six year with the Bears and led them to the Super Bowl. And really after that year, Troy Aikman, he has only started eight games in three years since. Yeah, he was with Kyle Shanahan last year in Houston, and so he's the perfect backup here in Washington, a guy who's got a good understanding of the offense and is capable of coming in and playing and having won games in the league if Donovan were to go down. Another fumble by Terrain and covered up by Anthony Armstrong. You know, the Bears players right there were so interested in getting an offsides call that they didn't play much defense. Yeah, no, they were all trying to point out that there had been movement along the offensive line, and as a result of that, uh, they were out of position then to make a play. Anthony Armstrong in good position there to recover that fumble. Ryan Train now has put the ball on the ground a couple of times. Those are the kinds of things you worry about for a guy who hasn't carried the ball any more than he has. Gunned in there to Santana Moss, well short of the first down. It'll bring up third down and seven. Another big play for the Chicago defense under five minutes to go. Well, and we talked about it coming in, uh, you know, all about Chicago's third down problems. Well, Washington wasn't much better, only converting 27% on the year coming into this game and that's exactly where they're at in this game here today. Joey Galloway giving a hand signal to both Santana Moss and Donovan McNabb. Flag down McNabb sacked at the 35 yard line by Tino Isamoa. Uh, he just got a free run at Donovan McNabb, and I don't even think it's gonna gonna matter. Looks like they're they're calling offsides on Chicago. Offside number 71, defense lined up in a neutral zone, five yard penalty, still third down. That is a huge call. He just gets a free run right here on Donovan and. Artis Hicks, he blocks out. You got to protect the inside gap first. He doesn't see the blitz, and there's no chance for McNabb, but all for not. So you get the sack on third down, but the penalty turns it into a third and one. Yeah, now they got every play in the playbook at their disposal. He didn't get there. So the Bears are going to get it back one more time. Yeah, I just thought Ryan Terrain went into the line there a little bit tentative, and he tried cutting that back. And for such a short yarded situation, if he stays play side, you can see if he stays this side, he's in pretty good shape. Instead, he tries cutting it back a little bit, and he runs right in. Then it was that Ewu who winds up making the play along with Adonaje, but but he had an easy first down if he keeps front side. Smith nearly had one blocked his last punt by Corey Graham. Gets this one away. And frustration on the face of Devin Hester. They have not allowed him to bring back a punt all day. Well, frustration, but he ought to be smiling knowing that he's gotten the respect of Washington. I don't know that he'll receive, ever receive another punt. It's kind of like what we've been saying here in the second half. Who wants it? You know, I mean, right now, uh, football hasn't been great on the offensive side. Defenses have done a really nice job of keeping their teams in it. Chicago gets another chance here with plenty of time and two timeouts. And I think if you're Jay Cutler, you've got to approach this series as though this is going to be your last possession. Good protection on first down and thrown behind Devin Hester. Yeah, we've seen a few of those from Jay Cutler here today. And he had good protection there. And I don't know, you know, if it's 
It looked like he set up pretty good. You know, sometimes as we've seen on the interception that he had when he was trying to fit one there on into the corner, you know, he'll throw off his back foot, but you know, that's a ball that that's a ball that quite simply you just got to be able to make if you're gonna be an NFL quarterback. Reception made by Johnny Knox, and that'll be good enough for a first down up to the 31. Clock continues to run 315. You know, I'm still a little surprised that they haven't taken a shot at D'Angelo Hall. You know, right there, Johnny Knox again going up against D'Angelo Hall, and he's playing him pretty tight. We've seen him jump some routes, and we haven't yet seen a double move on him. And you know, to do that, you've got to get some time in the pocket. Maybe that's why Mike Martz hasn't called it, as he's so worried about giving up another sack. He finds Knox down the middle of the field. Another first down to the 48. And you kind of wonder where, where Johnny Knox's confidence level is right now. That previous catch that he had, you know, he was pretty secure with the football and just wanted to make sure he caught it. And he comes right back and makes another reception. Deep ball. D'Angelo Hall with his fourth interception of the game. So much was written last week in the loss to Indianapolis about all the dropped interceptions by the Redskins secondary. Not today. Well, watch D'Angelo Hall. He turns and bails right at the snap of the ball. And so there was never a chance to complete this one. You know, Jay Cutler wants to take a shot, but there's not there's no double move to get D'Angelo Hall to jump it. And as I said earlier, what D'Angelo likes to do is clue the quarterback. So he's watching Jay this entire time, and then Jay throws one up, but Johnny Knox never got up on top of D'Angelo Hall. There was never an opportunity to complete that pass. I'm surprised that, that Jay turned it loose the way he did. It ties an NFL record. Fourth interception. And all of them have been in the second half. That has to be a record four INTs and a half. Of course, the only record that matters are wins and losses. And here you're looking as we wind out of the two minute warning. There have been 18 games in the entire NFL this season in which a team has scored 17 points or less and won the game. The Redskins have three of those 18 wins, and this would be a fourth. Well, we've seen it all year long with the Redskins. I mean, I think Mike Shanahan said it best the other day. He said, we, you know, we, we're a three and three team. I mean, that's what we are. That's what probably what we should be. You know, you look at them and with the three wins, you could point to a couple of games and say, well, they could have had a couple more wins. And you could also look at it and say they could have had a couple more losses. And so they probably are where they where they should be. But what they have done is they've given themselves a chance to win each and every game. I mean, even the St. Louis game, which was probably their worst performance, they had a chance late to still come out on top. They are spending a timeout. They have one left. They're trying to come up with a stop. And a first down catch made by Cooley. Right at the first down marker. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. A fresh set of downs for the Redskins. Trying to put this one on ice. Total of nine turnovers in this game. That's the most in any game in the NFL so far this year. We have two minutes to play. And they're just trying to knock it out of the arms of Ryan Terrain, who's already put it on the ground once today. And that'll be the Bears' final timeout. Of course, when the day began, the Bears in first place in the NFC North with a 4 and 2 record. If they're unable to come back, it sends them to 4 and 3. And you've got the tilt later tonight, a big one in Green Bay between Minnesota coming off a win over Dallas. And the Packers trying to get healthy again and start winning games again. Meanwhile, for Washington, if the Redskins can win, boy, that NFC North all of a sudden becomes very interesting because Tennessee is beating Philadelphia right now a game not over and of course Dallas and the Giants will play tomorrow night 
Dallas should win that game. That'd be a three-way tie atop the NFC East. Yeah, I think the entire NFC is pretty interesting still. Terrain across midfield. And that's a first down. Well, they needed to pick up a first down in order to run this clock out, and Ryan Terrain doing a good job spelling Clinton Portis. I still think they miss Clinton Portis for a lot of reasons. He's a heck of a player, he's a good runner, he's tough, he's excellent in pass protection. But Ryan Terrain, a lot of people wondering what. Mike Shanahan saw in him going back to even when he was with the Denver Broncos and I think people now are starting to see I wouldn't question Mike Shanahan and his ability to pick out a pretty good runner. That's back to back rushing games of 100 yards or more by terrain the last Redskin to do that. You just said his name Clinton Portis back in the early part of 2008. So will be back to back losses at home for Chicago meanwhile for the Redskins. Back to back road games on Halloween they'll be in Detroit get a bye week and then a mighty tough part of the schedule following that. Well I, I've really admired the job that Mike Shanahan has done with this Washington team. This is an organization that's been in, in a lot of disarray for a number of years and he's come in he's instilled some discipline he's let everyone know how it's going to be done. Making everybody accountable they're going to practice if they're going to play and they're they're playing good football you know I don't know that they have all the pieces in place I, I think they've got a few more that they need to add especially on the defensive side if they're going to continue to do the things that they're doing within that three four scheme but to be where they're at right now at four and three I, I think that comes as a surprise to most people who knew this Redskin team coming into the year with well, a win today Mike Shanahan will pass Bill Coward with his one hundred and fiftieth regular season win that's the sixteenth most in the history of the league. So a homecoming for Shanahan for McNabb. And they beat the Red or the Redskins beat the Bears. Final count of 17 to 14. We'll have some bonus coverage coming your way. And we're back to wrap it up. After these messages, Redskins win it 17-14 in Chicago.